All right. Um, here's a properly applied problem, if you like. Maybe it still feels a little bit contrived. Uh, but, but this is exactly the sort of scenario where differentials might actually be used in practice, right? Um, probably not just for party tricks where we approximate square roots. Um, differentials show up all the time. If you're, doing, if you're doing a science course, if you're doing physics especially, right, and you're doing, you're doing the lab component of your course, one of the things that you always have to pay attention to is you're making a measurement. Maybe you've got the, the calipers, right? You're measuring something. And that measurement always comes with a possible error, right? It'll say right on the instrument, you know, it's accurate up to plus or minus a certain amount, right? Um, and one of the things that you always had to include in your lab report is, okay, I know that my, my length measurement was off by plus or minus something like this, 0 0.1 millimeters. Um, what is the possible error in the quantity that I computed using this measurement, right? Because measurements can never be exact, right? Measurements are always only approximate. This is one of the reasons why we're okay with approximations in calculus, because if we're using it in the real world, the numbers that we're putting in are measurements. Measurements are always approximate. So we already are dealing with approximations, even if our calculations are exact, right? So if we can do a calculation faster by allowing for an approximation rather than the exact value, we're often okay with that because in the end, the numbers we're putting in are only approximate numbers anyway, right? As long as we can kind of keep track of how good our approximation is, how far off we possibly are, then we're okay. So what do we do with this? Uh, we're making ball bearings. We know the diameter. We know the possible sort of variation in the diameter. Um, we know the density of the material, and we want to know how far off we might be in the mass, right? Okay, so first thing we gotta do is think about how do we calculate mass, okay? So mass is density. Um, what do we wanna use for density? Delta, rho, let's use a rho. Rho times volume, right? So density, volume, okay? In our case, that's 7.85, we'll leave the units out, times, well, what's the volume? It's a sphere, it's a ball, right? So assume spherical, 4 thirds times pi times the radius cubed, right? So as long as the radius is in centimeters, then this is going to be volume in cubic centimeters times the mass per cubic centimeter, we get mass in grams, right? Okay, very good. Um, now, one thing to be careful about, we need the radius, but we're given diameter, right? So R is gonna be one, right? Half the diameter. Um, that also means, well, this, right? This is the possible error in the diameter, so the possible error in the radius is, is going to be half that. So dr will be plus or minus 0 0.05, okay? Maybe we drop the plus minus, but dr is going to be 0 0.05, okay? So what's next? Calculate the differential, dm, right? And now the nice thing here, right, we're not actually trying to approximate the value of m, we're just trying to approximate the error, right? If, if the radius changes by 0 0.05, how much does the mass possibly change, right? So what we're really trying to calculate here is delta M, right? And we know that delta M is approximated very well by dm, so we're on the right track, right? dm is going to be, well, let's see. It's gonna be 7.85 times. So we take the derivative here with respect to r, right? We have a function, think of this as a function of r. We want f prime. 3 comes down, 4 pi r squared times dr. Okay, good. All right, so we multiply all this out. The, uh, 
this comes 30, about 31.4 times pi times, well, the radius is just 1, okay, times our dr, which is 0 0.05, okay. All right, well, this is obviously calculator work, um, but if you crunch the numbers on this, you're going to get 0 0.4. Four nine three, okay, and that's going to be measured in grams, okay, All right? Um, dr also has units of, of centimeters here, so um, oh, and I should be careful. Um, this is right, but I'm missing a zero here, right? Be careful of units. This is in millimeters, this is in centimeters. So 0 0.1 millimeters um, is 0 0.01 centimeters. So I need a 0 0.005 if I want that to be in centimeters. Okay. All right. But I'm pretty sure that last answer is right because, well, yeah, I copied it at the textbook. 0.493. Okay. So, so the mass in these ball bearings, it can vary by as much as half a gram. Is that a good or a bad thing, right? Well, I don't know. What's the actual original mass, right? And so now we might come back and say, well, okay, that's fine, but this is for how much mass? This is for m equal to uh, 7.85 times pi, right, times 1 cubed, right? So we could do... You know, so the sort of relative error is really what we care about here, right? Um, so this error relative to that is going to be dm over m, okay? And and you can actually kind of work this out. In fact, it's, it's, a lot of things are gonna are gonna cancel out here, right? Um, it's gonna be seven point eight five times pi times four times r squared times dr over m seven point eight five times pi times four over three times r cubed. And a lot of things cancel. That cancels, that cancels, that cancels, that cancels. The fours cancel. Two of those cancel, right? Um, so we actually get something that looks like uh, 3 dr over r. So it's just 3 times that error, which comes out to 0 0.015. Or if you like it as a percentage, 1.5 percent. Okay, so there's there's a 1.5 percent variation in in the mass of these of these ball bearings, and now I guess depending on your application, you decide whether or not that's acceptable.